Okay, where do I start on this? User Lindy Freyland mentioned that when I polish red lines, I'm destroying the faceted surface that the original cars possessed. And while the end result looks good, it's not necessarily back to its original state because polishing to a mirror shine reflects light in only one direction. And that's a true statement. By sanding and polishing the car, I am removing the facets. And the reason is most of the cars I'm dealing with, the surfaces are pretty much gone anyway, from kids playing with the cars or from missed storage. Usually the surface is completely shot. This leaves us with a question. Could we remove the oxidation and polish the car without taking sandpaper to it? Or another way to ask this question is, can we polish a faceted surface without doing damage to the facets on that surface? The answer of course is yes. And it actually turns out to be very easy. So easy that I wish I was doing it years ago. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to grab is some phosphoric acid, 75%. You can purchase this on eBay. You're gonna need a mason jar that can handle a little bit of heat because it does get a little bit warm. A piece of stainless steel like this. This is just bar stock. But you can also get a stainless steel knife from a dollar store. It'll work fine. You'll need a clamp to clamp the stainless steel into your jar. You're gonna need a cheap battery charger. This one I think I got at Tractor Supply for 20 bucks. What you'll need to do is take your negative lead and that's the black one here. Clamp it onto the stainless steel bar. The red one will be used to clamp onto the car. And all we need to do now is pour in our phosphoric acid and plug in our battery charger. Okay, let's see what this can do. I've got a US penny here. It's fairly tarnished and corroded. We'll submerge it using the positive lead for just a few seconds and there you go you can see that it's nice and shiny now i'm going to use a, another mason jar off to the side with some water to wash the phosphoric acid off so i'll pull it off the clamp and you can see here that it's now nice and shiny okay so here's the wagon body from earlier in the video i just took the car body off its base and removed the paint as usual you can see here it's got a kind of tarnished surface. Nothing's been done to this surface. No steel wool, no sanding. This is how it looks with the paint taken freshly off. So I'll submerge it in and we'll swirl it around. You do want to move the car as much as possible. This is to keep any air bubbles from forming on its surface. It does go in a little bit longer than the coin. Then you plunge it into your fresh water to remove any phosphoric acid. You want to get that off as quickly as possible because it will mess with your car. And this is how it looks when it first comes out. You'll notice that it doesn't immediately take on a shine like the coins do. And this is because the electrolysis process we're using deposits a residue on top of our shiny surface, hindering our view of it. So we need to remove that residue before we can see the shiny surface. So let's do that now. So the easiest way to remove the residue without harming the surface is to use a mild abrasive. I'm using rubbing compound here, but toothpaste or soft scrub will also work. I just apply a small amount of the compound and then use an old toothbrush to go over the car and clean off the residue. This only takes a few seconds to do, and then you can wash the car off under cold water and inspect the results. So here's how mine turned out after I got all the residue off. You can see that the surface is dramatically more shiny than the original raw surface that we began with. If you don't like the results, you can always clean the car very well and try again. And I do find that it does get a little bit shinier, but you do kind of reach a point where, where you kind of max out and you don't get any better results. So let's try out the other car. This is a Matchbox car. And unlike the first car, it's been played with and has a lot of oxidation on it. So we'll go ahead and plunge it in. Try to get these wires out of the way. This one has a lot of oxidation, so I'm gonna leave it in a little bit longer as it takes the oxidation off and then polishes the car. So we'll plunge it in the water. And once again, here is the final result. 
and just like the car before there's a lot of residue on this car especially since we left it in so long so we're going to need to go in now and remove that residue so here the cars are before and after you can see a pretty remarkable change from the raw zamac what i really love about this process is that it takes only seconds to get these results if you look closely you can see all the scratches and pits from the casting are still there the car's surface is polished and shiny but without using mechanical methods to get there that could alter the surface in major ways. On the small car, 90% of the oxidation was removed. I could re-dip the car and I'm pretty sure I'd get the remaining oxidation if I wanted to. For fun, I thought I'd compare it to a car that has been polished almost to a mirror shine. So all that's left to do now is to give it a shot on a red line car and then paint it and see how the end result looks. And I wish I had time to do that in this video, but unfortunately you'll need to wait a few days for that video. I want to take a quick moment to point out some safety remarks. This is using an acid, so rubber gloves or latex gloves are needed. However, phosphoric acid is not like other strong acids. It doesn't instantly burn you if you get any on you. But it gets uncomfortable fast, so have some water to rinse off any if you do get anything on you. Second, I wore safety glasses any time I was messing with the acid. Don't be stupid and lose your sight. Protect your eyes. And last, you'll notice that I used the big clamp from the battery charger to dip the cars. I originally used some small wire jumpers. The amps from this battery charger are too much for these jumpers and they began heating up instantly. So don't use small wires. Also, if you leave things in for too long, the solution will heat up. While I doubt you'd be able to get the solution to boil, there is a chance that you could break the glass container, causing an acid spill, or burn yourself. So stay aware of the temp. And finally, we're using electricity. This charger can push 6 amps no problem, more than enough to kill you in the right situation. As an electrician friend of mine said, if you plan to mess around with dangerous electricity, do so with one hand tied behind your back. This is of course so that you don't make a circuit with the path across your heart. All right. Please let me know what you think below. I do realize we're trading into some strange waters outside of the normal for Hot Wheels customizing, but I have wanted to try this for years and couldn't pass up the opportunity since someone was going to call me out on my polishing, as they should have. So I have some red lines picked out and we will give this a try ASAP. So thanks for your thumbs up and thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.